It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. I'm Dr. Ken Rosenthal, and those are the famous words that begin Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. Today, I'm going to show you A Tale of Two Irides. This is the story of two patients who, during cataract surgery, had serious damage to their irides, but who had very different outcomes because of the manner in which their surgery was handled postoperatively. Let's watch. The next day I saw the doctor. Right. And he told me about the iris being removed. came out with the cataract and was removed. Right. What exactly did he tell you? He just said that, uh, matter of factly, that I lost the iris during the operation. The cataract came out with the cataract. And, uh, then he told me about the iris implant, that you were able to do that and it would help me with light. And uh, so we made an appointment for you, I guess within a month. I know it was a short time when I had a visit with you. So it sounds like your doctor told you pr almost right away after the operation that there was a problem. Well, that you did. had a complication. He, yes, he did the next day. But see, I thought it was still it was still dilated, and everybody thought, well, gee, that's still pretty black. Yeah. I didn't realize the iris was gone. Right. But uh, then he had told me. How did you feel when he explained to you that you had had a problem or a complication? Well, the I don't operation? know. I don't understand why. I was very calm. As you've seen, this 74-year-old lady suffered from uh, the accidental expulsion of the iris during phacoemulsification. emulsification. The capsule bag is intact, a well-centered, uh, stable Acrosoft intraocular lens with an intact anterior capsule rim is noted. Helon 5 followed by hydro elevation of the anterior capsular edge are performed to create a potential space between the anterior capsule leaflet and the intraocular lens and the posterior capsule. Helon 5 is subsequently instilled into the capsular bag uh, in order to hyperinflate it to accommodate the iris prosthetic device. The Optech iris prosthetic device was inserted here under a compassionate use exemption from the U.S. FDA, as this is not an FDA-approved device. It is made of color PMMA. It consists of three segments. Here you see the first one going in. We like to put them in the anterior segment first and then tuck them into the each side of the capsular bag. And as you can see, this requires some um, creation of space using a retentive viscoelastic. The second element is then inserted in a similar fashion. And this time, this, the uh, element will be inserted at 90 degrees to the first device so that it creates a continuous circular uh, iris pattern. Uh, the devices uh, will then uh, be in the capsule bag, but relatively unstable as there's nothing to hold them in these positions. But it does create a very nice, approximately four to four and a half millimeter pupil. This third element is a clip, which not only creates a perfectly round central pupil of fixed size, but serves to integrate the two uh, disparate elements of the iris prosthetic device. And uh, there, here is the post-operative appearance a uh, few months post-operatively. First week or two. Did the doctor mention to you anything about having had a complication or a problem no, during surgery, anything not. like that? The doctor never mentioned any problem. Uh, he just associated with that I had a lot of swelling. Then after maybe that fourth visit or so, he said now it's the stitches that are causing the problem. Uh, he removed the stitches and I still couldn't see. Uh, after a period of time, he said we have to do a laser type surgery on you. 
This is the 59-year-old gentleman we just interviewed. As you can see, there is a large iridodialysis uh, that emanates from the screen to the right. Uh, the uh, iris is partially atrophic in the lower screen. Uh, we're going to make a large incision here of approximately 10 to 11 millimeters using full thickness uh, corneal scleral scissors. Uh, the iris that's viable will be sutured to the anterior chamber uh, and just posterior to the anterior chamber angle uh, using a double-armed proline suture. Here's the first arm going through the sclera and then both pulled through to reconstruct as much of the original iris as possible. As you can see here, this patient's iris damage is not as extensive as the first patient's, uh, and yet it requires a more extensive uh, reconstruction owing to the fact that the iris is atrophied and requires partial excision, as we'll see in a moment, and also to the fact that the posterior capsule is open. The intraocular lens had to be uh, removed from this eye. cutting the atrophic iris and then taking the uh, intraocular device. This is a Model 311 uh, Optech iris reconstruction device being inserted here under FDA clinical trials. This is not as yet an FDA approved device, but our experience with it ha over the last several years has been quite positive. A uh, Gore-Tex double arm suture is used to secure this uh, device uh, on both sides through the eyelets of the fixation eyelids of the haptics. Uh, the Gore-Tex suture is extremely durable, uh, it is non-absorbable, and has extremely good tensile strength. Similarly to the proximal uh, haptic is secured to the sclera as well. I like to make these full thickness so that they can uh, ha take advantage of the full strength of the full, strength, full thickness sclera, however, uh, that does leave the suture exposed. And so, therefore, uh, I like to uh, apply a tutoplast, uh, eye bank or eye bank sclera, using tissue tissue me glue. That I had severe eye problem after the surgery. He should have been straightforward to me. He should have told me, "Listen, Jerry, the surgery was uh, very difficult to perform." Uh, he should have told me that after one or two visits that he cannot help me. Best advice I can give you. Please be straightforward. Tell your patient the correct information and don't let them suffer like I have really suffered. It happened and it happened. It was a terrible thing to happen. I wish it didn't, but I was glad that Dr. Rose was over there to repair the damage. <laughs>